Okay, so this is lesson two on half-lives. We're going to be understanding the concept of what half-lives are. We're going to talk about calculating for variables, and we're going to do a bunch of practice problems. Now, the persistent paradox that is nuclear power. It's efficient. One train car full of nuclear fuel can keep a nuclear power plant running for a year, but it takes a whole train load of coal every day to keep a conventional power plant running. There are a lot of things to be afraid of when it comes to nuclear power. There are meltdowns where the uranium metal fuel gets so hot that it burns a hole through the reactor and the whole thing explodes. There are terrorists who could get hold of some of this nuclear material and make the events of September 11th look like getting a parking ticket. The real terror, the real danger, the real horror of nuclear power may come long after the power is generated with nuclear waste. Now, do science and society have an answer for this problem? Well, let's have a look. 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 A given amount of time that a radioactive sample takes to decay by 50% of what it originally was is the definition of a half-life. So if you look at the diagram to the right, you'll see that we started with a full sample of these little red dots. Um, the amount of time it took for 50% of those dots to disappear would be the half-life. So notice that after a certain amount of time keeps passing, we end up with less and less and less. It never reaches zero though. Another way to visualize that exact concept is looking at pie charts. So if you were to start with 100% or your initial amount, every half-life you would decay by half. So 100% goes to 50%, which goes to a quarter or 25% which goes to 12% to 6 to 3%. Another way to visualize half-lives is through mass, percentages, and fractions. So if our original mass was 200 grams, one half-life, or half of that, is 100 grams. You can continue that by going half, 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 until you get up to things like 7, 8, and 9 half-lives. We need to specify the fact that this has nothing to do with the amount of atoms. It's really more so the mass or the complete sample. Please pay very close attention to how you do percentages and how you do fractions for half-lives. So we will be calculating the variables listed below. Um, you can calculate for the amount remaining or the grams or mass. You can calculate the fraction remaining, the actual half-life, so the time it actually takes, the number of half-lives, so how many half-lives have actually taken place, uh, the original mass of a radioactive sample, and the time elapsed, so the total amount of time it took to go from one mass to a new mass. If you notice in Table N, the ones that have a shorter half-life, the ones that are in milliseconds, minutes, and seconds, these are going to be your less stable isotopes. While the ones that have a very long half-life, like years, or the ones that have scientific notation that represent years, they're going to be the more stable isotopes. So we're going to teach you how to determine half-lives um, by using some examples. So how many half-lives, or numbers of times that the sample actually divides in half, has gold-198 undergone if the sample was left alone for 13.475 days. So, take the sample of time from the question, divide it by the half-life time from table N, so you have to find a gold 188, and that gives you the total number of half-lives that that would take. I would write this formula next to table N or right under table N wherever you have some room. So if you were to put this all this information into the actual formula, you could say that 13.475 days divided by the half-life of gold, which is 2.695, that would tell us we have five half-lives. This is kind of like the idea of like how old you are. So for example, if one birthday is 365 days, how many days have you been around if you're 15 years old? You can think about it that way as well. We measure radioactivity in what's called half-lives. You see, the atoms in radioactive material spontaneously just break apart or decay. 
Now we can't tell when an individual atom will decay, but we can tell when a fraction of them will. So a half-life is the amount of time it takes for half the atoms in a piece of radioactive material to break apart. Now plutonium has a half-life of 24,000 years. So let's say this red water is the plutonium in a spent nuclear fuel rod fresh from the reactor. Well, after one half-life, 24,000 years, diluting this water by half, it looks like this. After two half-lives, 48,000 years, it would look like this. After 10 half-lives, 240,000 years, the water starts to look pretty clear. Now, plutonium is notorious. It's especially radioactive. It's 20 million times more radioactive than uranium dug from a mine. You see, we're not talking about potato salad left out in the sun. We're talking about plutonium. So let's try this actual example. This one says that if we have a sample of carbon-14 that has an original mass of 52 grams, what mass will it have after 11,430 years? So this is one where you're going to be actually taking a mass and decaying it for a certain amount of half-lives. So step one is using table N, determine the amount of time that takes. That's every half-life is 5,715 years. So let's determine how many half-lives that is. Take the time from the question, take the time from table N, divide the two, and that's how many half-lives you have. Then using what we're going to call the arrow method, which we'll show you in just a second, you're going to divide your sample by two, two times, because you have two half-lives. So your original mass after the first half-life would be 26 grams. That's after 5,715 years. We need 11,430 years. So you're going to divide again 26 by two, and you'll get 13 grams, which is supposed to tell you the new mass after 11,430 years. This next part for half-lives is what we call the arrow method. The arrow method is actually using physical arrows on your piece of paper when you draw them down to represent a half-life. As you notice in the top left corner, that cyclical picture, when you're going from your original mass to your remaining mass, you're dividing by two. So every arrow represents division of two. But if you're going from your remaining mass to the original mass, as some questions will ask you, every half-life you're going to be doubling up. So if you look below, You'll notice 100 grams breaks down to 50 and then breaks down to 25. That's going from original to remaining, hence the division of 2 for every half-life. However, if you look at the bottom bottom, you'll notice that 10 grams goes to 20 grams to 40 grams. That's showing your remaining mass building itself back up to figure out the original mass of the sample before it decayed. So here's a question. If we have a sample of cesium-137, its original mass is 52 grams, what mass will remain after 150 years? To do this, we have to figure out the half-life of cesium-137. Looking on your reference table, it's 30.2 years. So, we now need to determine the number of half-lives the sample underwent. So if you take 150 years from the question, divide it by 30.2, you get roughly, or approximately, five half-lives. Then, you're gonna be dividing the sample in half for every half-life that we just calculated in step two. So 50 grams divided by 2 is 26. That is then divided to 13, to 65, to 13, to 6.5, to 3.25. And finally, on the fifth arrow, representing your fifth half-life, you have a final mass of 1.63 grams. Let's try another sample. If we have iron 53 with an original mass of 250 grams, what fraction, fraction, not mass or percent, what fraction will remain after 25.5 minutes? So find the half-life. Then using 8.51 minutes, we're going to determine how many half-lives the sample underwent. So you take 25.5 divided by 8.51, and you get approximately three half-lives. So again, you're taking your mass of 250 grams, and you're dividing that in half for every half-life that we have. Now, are we using 250 grams? No, we're looking for just the fraction now. So one over one represents 250 grams. And again, every arrow represents the division by half. So you're noticing you have three arrows for three half-lives and one over one breaks down to one over two. That breaks down to one over four and that breaks down to one over eight. In this problem, we're gonna be looking at technetium because it's going to be a radioisotope that is used for curing and detecting brain tumors. 
and the half-life of Technetium-99 is about six hours. That is not the same half-life as found on reference table N. However, if 10 micrograms are left after 24 hours, how much was administered to the patient originally? So using the half-life given to you in the reading, which is six years, we're going to figure out how many half-lives that was, which turns out to be four. 24 hours from the reading divided by its half-life gives you four half-lives. Then you're going to be multiplying the sample by two for each half-life because we are trying to find the original amount. We're taking 10 micrograms and converting that one, two, three, four times to tell us that our original sample was 160 micrograms. In this problem, after 37 hours, two grams remain unchanged from a sample of potassium-42. How much was the original sample? So again, this is going to be one of those problems that every half-life is a doubling up. First thing we have to do is find the half-life. Looking on table N, you'll notice it's 12.36 hours. Then we have to figure out how many half-lives that underwent. So you take 37 divided by 12.36 and you get roughly three half-lives. Yes, your half-lives should be whole numbers. Then you're going to be multiplying the sample by two for each half-life because we're trying to find the original. So two turns to four, four turns to eight, and eight turns to 16. Again, three arrows representing three half-lives. In this problem, it says how long, so this is a time problem, we're looking for an actual physical measurement of time, will it take for 400 grams of a sample of phosphorus 32 to decay to 50 grams? So determine via arrow method how many half-lives that is. Which means simply, if you start at 400 and you keep breaking your sample down to 50, how many half-lives is that? So you're noticing one half-life brings 400 to 200, two brings 200 to 100, and three brings 100 to 50. Then you have to find the half-life of phosphorus 32 on reference table N, which is 14.28 days. And finally, if you multiply the half-lives by time, or three times 14.28 days, you will get 42.84 days. That would be the amount of time it takes for 400 grams of, of phosphorus 32 to decay to 50 grams.